I'm Jake Wessels. I'm a junior Timberline right now, and I love playing basketball and uh, swimming. So when I was born, the doctor saw that I had a defect in my BSD, and at first they thought it was going to be okay and that my heart would naturally repair itself. But sadly, that wasn't the case, and by the time I was three years old, they realized that I had to have a uh, heart surgery or else I would need a full heart lung transplant. Jake was born with a heart defect, actually two heart defects. He had a large ventricle septum defect and also an ASD, uh, which was a hole in the aorta, a little bit higher up. Oh, it was really scary. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jake was born with these big, beautiful blue eyes and tons of energy and this amazing little boy. Um, and within a very short period of time, the very next morning, uh, we had a, cardi a pediatric cardiologist in our room and she was describing um, a, a hole that was high in the heart chamber between the, the ventricles. And the problem uh, was that the blood flow was going in the opposite direction of what it's supposed to. And she described that this is, this is a very common birth defect. Uh, we are going to watch it. Uh, we've caught it. We, this is good because we now know what to look for. Uh, he, was not, he did not have to go on any medication, um, but it was something that we had to monitor for quite some time. And there was every hope in the world that he would be able to heal these defects on his own. And oftentimes kids can't. It's the most common birth defect um, for children or, or babies that are born is, is, a, is a heart defect, a VSD or an ASD. Holes in the heart. It's always in the back of your mind. Of course, you know, you want to treat him a little differently, more fragile, but then you're like, you know what, he's a kid, he's going to do and you know what boys do. And so you play with them. And, but it always, it was always in the back of your mind going, are these things healing or not? And, but of course we always had, you know, checkups, I think yearly, if not every six months or so, those first early stages. And so you're always, you know, hoping and praying that they are healing on them on themselves. Yeah, by the time he was coming up on his third birthday, we had, you know, appointment with this cardiologist and she said, this, this needs fixed, it's not healing itself. And if we don't fix it, you know, he could have catastrophic health problems. We, we would take him in to see the cardiologist and Dr. Eloisa Walker, who is his uh, cardiologist here in Boise, was really good with him. But that particular day when she walked back in the room after his echo and um, all of these different tests that they do every year. Uh, she said, um, I don't like what I hear. Uh, we, basically, she said, we are, we are now being pushed to surgery. How he was healing his heart is no longer, is no longer beneficial, it's detrimental. Um, we just, you know, I, like I said, just, we just knew that there was no other option. This is what we had to do. Um, so we just fucking put our faith in the doctors and they knew what they were doing and that's all you can do. <laughs> I think the, the biggest thing I remember is just handing him over to the doctors when I came to get him. It was really hard. Since the day Jake was born, I was just praying for him to be able to run and play with his, you know, with his friends and not have any limitations. And it, and he was doing really good in making that happen for years. And then it didn't, it wasn't going to turn out that way and we were going to have to go to surgery. So um, we did a lot of research, we did a lot of uh, uh, reading into this, and it's it's not uncommon it's frankly like I mentioned really common but when it's your kid it's a big deal um, because it really kind of came down to 
I remember a friend saying to me, I don't know how you guys are doing this. And I remember just saying back, um, it's amazing what you have to accept when you don't have a choice. And so we were gonna go to surgery and that's all there was to it. But there was always in the back of my mind this feeling of, what if the next beat doesn't happen? Because they do shut down, they go in a heart and lung machine, they stop the heart, stop the lungs. What if when they turn everything back on, it doesn't work? What if it doesn't beat again? And that was the thing that was probably the hardest is being able to just trust that people are trained. I don't have that kind of education. So the fact that people are smart enough, I just thank God every day that people are smart enough to be able to be trained in a way that can take something this important and critical and be able to fix it. My good friend, Curious George, he got me through that surgery. Uh, the uh, doctors were able to use this as a little something to comfort me during the surgery. And they told me that Curious George had a surgery just like me. And uh, they pretended that he had like the line down his chest too. And it just kind of got me through it knowing that someone else had it too and I was hopefully gonna be okay. I really like to do something in healthcare, specifically probably helping out kids and stuff. And just pursuing them to live a healthy lifestyle and helping them out with their, if they're sick or they just need some help uh, health-wise. So uh, I guess at my age, I, didn't re I wasn't really scared because I wasn't like aware a whole lot. But for a kid that's like, you know, in like his past like the third grade, you know, nine, 10 and on, you know, they're gonna be comprehensive of the situation that they're in. And if I was coming, I'd be very scared. And I just wanna like help them out and like just let them know that it's gonna be scary, but you will get through it. The uh, people who are performing the surgeries, they've been trained very well with the help of like the American Heart Association and certain you know, donations to the research of your condition and you will be okay. It may be scary, but you'll be okay. I do like going over my story because it provides me with some inspiration, I think, about I went, I was able to survive through this. I should be able to get through any challenge or obstacle that's in my way now. Well, the Dr. DT who did the surgery, I just want to thank him to the man back. He gave me an athletic ability. He gave me just an ability to be like it just to run around and play with all my friends and my peers and kids and not be held back when it comes to like sports and stuff, one of my favorite things to do. I want to thank Dr. Walker for providing me with some sense of confidence heading into the surgery that I'll be okay and for helping me afterwards. My parents for supporting me through it and um, you know, really telling me that it will be, it might be scary, but it'll be all right because they're right there being my guardians. And, and I want to thank the American Heart Association for their donations to different research activities involved with conditions like mine. And because I know it's a very common condition and with their support and their donations, uh, professionals can get the training that they need to help children out.